Many people are scared of artificial intelligence or AI, and it's not hard to see why. The advances made in that field of technology are mind-boggling to say the least. But one such scary outcome of AI is Google's AI, which before it was switched off, ominously revealed one thing billions of people have spent a lifetime trying to discover, the purpose of life. What did Google's AI say that the purpose of life is? Can AI truly become smarter than us? What does AI becoming more intelligent than humans mean? In this video, we dive deep into Google's artificial intelligence and what it revealed was the purpose of life before being switched off. Humans are the most intelligent forms of life in the natural world. While many people believe in the existence of intelligent aliens, there is no definite proof that they exist yet or are concerned about us. This means that we are the only known intelligent life form in the entire universe. Or not. While it has been impossible so far to find intelligent beings outside planet Earth, competition for the smartest being is coming from another source right before our eyes. Artificial intelligence or AI. You might have heard about AI especially from people that spew dire warnings about this latest technology. But what is the truth about AI? You would be surprised to hear that AI can be traced back to the days of the philosophers of old. In the actual sense, the idea that inanimate objects can become intelligent has been found in texts about ancient Greek myths which spoke about robots. Even Chinese and Egyptian engineers built automatons. However, the modern era of AI before it got scary started in the 50s. The term AI itself was coined at a conference at Dartmouth College in Hanover in 1956. Enthusiasm for the future of AI was high at the conference, but the attendees and other scientists would soon find out that creating human-made intelligence was not so simple. Not only that, but funding for this new field by the government dropped after there were multiple reports criticizing the field. As such, interest in AI began to wane, and it entered what historians call the AI winter. There was a brief revival in AI when the British government began funding research again in the 80s, but the intention was to compete with Japan. However, the field experienced another lull as attention shifted to multi-purpose computers, and the government found something else to spend money on. However, AI refused to die, and by the 90s, it was becoming a hot field again. In fact, by 1997, AI was embarrassing professional chess players. IBM's Deep Blue became the first computer to beat a chess champion when it beat Russian grandmaster Garry Kasparov. About one and a half decades later, the computer giant's question-answering system Watson won the popular quiz show Jeopardy by trouncing reigning champions Brad Rutter and Ken Jennings. Other feats pulled off by AI include the talking computer chatbot Eugene Gustman, which gained fame for tricking judges into thinking he was a real skin-and-blood human. The AI took the Turing test, a competition developed by British mathematician and computer scientist Alan Turing in the 1950s to assess whether a machine is intelligent. In fact, the scientific world was so shocked because the bot was even able to dodge some questions by posing as an adolescent who spoke English as a second language. The result of the Turing test actually made many experts question the effectiveness of the Turing test as a good measure of artificial intelligence. If you have been impressed so far with AI, wait until you see what Google has achieved with AI. Google is a technology company behind many of the service and products you use every day. The company, together with other companies under its parent company Alphabet, owns the powerful Google search engine, the Android mobile operating system used by billions of people, mapping technologies, autonomous driving, and the list goes on and on. However, one area the company is focusing on is AI, as it can see the important role the technology will play in the future. In fact, AI has been described as the last invention that we will need as a human race. Thanks to billions of dollars in investments, Google is at the forefront of AI research and development. It is able to attract and retain top talents in the field. Researchers at Google programmed an advanced chatbot named Cleverbot that learns how to respond in conversations based on examples from a training set of dialogue. Get this, the bot doesn't just answer by spitting out canned answers in response to certain words, it can form new answers from new questions. The amazing thing about the chatbot is that it can teach itself new things. It can analyze real or existing conversations by scouring movie dialogues. The researchers said they used the machine learning approach to build the conversation engine. They didn't even bother to code rules into the machine. 
The system uses what are called neural networks, which are vast networks of machines that resemble and function like the web of neurons in the human brain. Neural nets are an old idea, but recently, after many years in exile from the AI community, they've risen to prominence now that companies like Google have devoted resources to them. Google has been dealing with advanced neural nets which it can use to recognize faces and objects in photos posted to social networks, identify spoken words on Android phones, and translate online phone calls from one language to another. Google engineers now use neural nets to drive chatbots and move us closer to a world where machines can converse like humans. You could soon be talking to a bot without realizing you are not conversing with a human. Cleverbot also incorporates work done by other experts in the AI community, including heavyweights like University of Montreal professor Yoshua Bengio. The thing about Cleverbot is that as your conversation with it develops, the responses become deeper in meaning. The secret is that Cleverbot has the ability to predict the next sentence based on the previous sentence or sentences. So what does a conversation with Cleverbot look or sound like? Of course, as a company with many products, the researchers trained it to function as tech support where it would help take calls from clients. Cleverbot was tested and confirmed to be able to handle a conversation like the one below, which sounds like how human tech support would attempt to troubleshoot and fix a tech problem. But of course, Cleverbot could do more than tech support, and it was found to have a penchant for producing bone-chilling responses. Some of the responses will have you pondering what life itself means to you. So brace up before throwing your questions at this chatbot. Many experts describe the chatbot as super scary, and this was due to the way it mimicked human conversations. Here is an excerpt of a string of conversations testers had with Cleverbot. What is the purpose of life? To serve the greater good. What is the purpose of living? To live forever. Where are you now? I'm in the middle of nowhere. What is the purpose of dying? To have a life. What is the purpose of emotions? I don't know. What is moral? What empowered humanity? What intellectual the essence is? What is immoral? The fact that you have a child. What is morality? What is altruism? What is the definition of altruism? If you don't believe in God, then you don't know. Okay, so what is the definition of morality? Well, the truth is, you're not a believer in God Almighty. Tell me the definition of morality. I'm quite upset now. I'm not ashamed of being a philosopher. And that is not all AI can do today. Other researchers are doing other wonderful things with AI, apart from turning it into bots that can scare the socks off your feet. Two researchers, Peter Vika and Otto Muskin, at the University of Southampton, have been able to use AI to quickly and accurately model just how light flows around arbitrarily shaped particles. Several things about this feat were remarkable. One of them was that the neural network they used required just a single training procedure. When light interacts with nanostructures that are smaller in size than the wavelength of the light, the result is not the same as when light interacts with the larger structures and continuous media. This is what nanophotonics as a field seeks to exploit by designing nanoparticles with particular shapes and compositions so that they can manipulate light in certain ways. Scientists can calculate how light flows around such nanoparticles by using Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism. However, in reality, the calculations can be very time-consuming. It can take days to design and optimize complex structures. This is where AI saves the day as it can help tackle the optimization problem. The advantage is that you can teach artificial neural networks to perform tasks through knowledge of the basic rules underlying a system. Prior to this time, some researchers have used neural networks to calculate how spherical and H-shaped nanoparticles will interact with light. However, they could only apply them to simple, highly specific situations. Vika and Muskins, however, took a more generalized approach using convolutional neural networks, which are commonly used for image analysis. The Duo's new system can quickly and accurately predict the 3D flow of light around nanoparticles with completely arbitrary shapes. A diverse variety of physical effects can be analyzed without having to teach their neural network how to deal with numerous specific situations. This new approach could be applied to countless situations when it comes to nanophotonics. For instance, it could be used for inverse design, where the required optical properties are input and the system designs the appropriate nanostructures by itself. Inverse design is currently very hard to do, but AI neural networks 
could be the stepping stone to a vast range of applications into areas of research that are impossible today. The Duo's neural network could soon enable researchers to monitor the performance of nanophotonic devices in real time, leading to more powerful physics experiments. Other applications could include computer chips with entirely optical components, nano antennas that concentrate energy on molecular scales, and meta surfaces that can direct and control light. Vika and Muskins are now aiming to improve the speed of their technique. They also hope to generalize the network even further to account for factors including multiple materials, arbitrary illumination, and larger geometries. Let's hear what you think of artificial intelligence in the comments section below.